Mama. I love you. I love you. I love you. Meow. Love you. Meow. Bye, kitty. Alright. Is it recording? recording? It's recording. Let's go. <laughs> My name is Cole Brand. Back in 2012, I made a YouTube channel. Two days right after my 16th birthday. And, uh, I don't know what to do now. Nearly a decade later, my videos have drastically changed. A topless, goofy kid with way too much time on his hands to a crock-wearing dad, my beautiful wife, Savannah, and our three kids. Eight-year-old Everly, two-year-old Posey, and one-year-old Zealand. We have worked hard to get where we are today, but Savannah and I are perfect examples of right place, right time. If you're quick with math, then you're concluding that I became a father when I was a teenager. Your math is right, but the story is wrong. When I met Savannah, I also had the God-given gift of meeting Everly. She made me a dad at just 19 years old and completely changed my life forever. Savannah had Everly from a previous relationship when she was 19 years old. Savannah and I got married on July 9th, 2017, and pretty soon after that, we started having babies. Posey is our sweet, full of personality little girl. And Zealand is our giggly mama's boy. We are happy, completely normal, other than the fact that we share our lives on the internet for a living. We have normal good days and normal bad days. I've been extremely lucky, extremely blessed in life. And by far the thing that brings me the most joy in life is everything that I've been talking about. My kids and my wife who's the best mom on earth. Like I said, we do have bad days. And back in February of 2021, we posted a video called My Struggle with Anxiety. Make happy videos and happy moments, but also when there's- I'll be able to tell you guys when something is going on. Yeah. So I'll start from the very beginning. Um, Cole's always a little more like, I'll let you kind of talk a little bit about it, but Cole's always a little more like stressed out about things with the kids, like just like health issues, them getting hurt, any like anything, like it, it always stresses. If it stresses me out like this much, it stresses Cole out like this much. Posey has kind of given us a run with just like hospital being hospital. She's been hospitalized three times, right? Yeah, like like in, in Posey's like like times. first year of life, she had to go to the ER like. Three times, and but not even included the cruise. You guys, it wasn't even just like she was kind of like kind of sick, and we had to go. She was like projectile vomiting, had to like get an IV, like got X rays. It's not like normal sick. No, like she's she's always like scared us so bad. I was truly just riddled with anxiety. I had convinced myself that our two year old daughter had had cancer, and it sounds so blunt and so almost bad to say, but I, I was convinced. And I, I really, I, I wasn't eating. I couldn't sleep. Um, she had bruising on her legs, like most kids do. But um, as you Google things, you can just convince yourself of stuff. And that's my personality, unfortunately. And we really didn't talk to anybody about it. No. That's I the thing too. So I think it was like eating him up inside too. Mm -hmm. Just like only talking to me about it, who I feel like I was like taking all the weight for him because I was like, no, it's fine. Because I feel like I had to be that way. Because if we were both, the way he was, I feel like we could have like went into like the darkest. It would have been bad way. had we both. And so said. I was like, nope, everything's fine. Like, there's no way that that's gonna happen. Like, everything's fine. It's not gonna happen to us, which is what I feel like all parents say mm -hmm. is like, you don't think it's gonna happen to you. Yeah, you don't think it's gonna happen to you. And so I would take that weight just for the fact that yeah, maybe I thought that that was a possibility, but I never wanted him to know that I thought that. And I and I kept justifying reasons why this was gonna happen to us because yeah. of our faith, or maybe because of our following into 
go through this battle on social media. You know, you, know, you, you justify reasons why maybe bad things are supposed to happen to you. Yeah. Um, and Posey was waking up in the middle of the night with leg pain, um, growing pains, whatever it was. She was waking up and she was like she was screaming. screaming. And it happened like for like two weeks, three weeks straight. And all that I could think of was this kid growing up who complained about leg pain and he ended up being leukemia. And he ended up passing away. And I was thinking maybe that happened for a reason so that now I would be aware and get her taken in. But I was such a nervous wreck that I couldn't even take her in. Yeah. I, I literally wasn't eating. I couldn't sleep. I mean, my kids are my everything. I took her to get blood tests a couple times. We did like all the scans that we possibly could do. We did everything. But I think at the end of all this, we knew exactly what God was doing and he was breaking our hearts for a reason. So broken. And, and as, as we were looking into this, I wasn't just focusing on my kid. I was now coming across all these other kids mm -hmm. and all these other families. And I was like, this is not an uncommon thing. You know, like, I, I, this is common. I mean, we were finding families down the street and neighborhoods not too far away, like in our community and then all across the country and the world. We're like, man, this is happening so often. And I was thinking people need to know, not, and I'm sure that people do, but like, I gotta do something. I gotta do something. That's all that was in my head is like, whenever I thought Posey had cancer, all I was thinking was like, we gotta fight. We gotta do something. We gotta fight. And even after, it's like, we gotta, we gotta fight, you know? I, I don't and just want to fight. And I think it'd be, it'd be so easy to just, because you see sad things on Instagram all the time and you just keep scrolling and scrolling and you'll see it and you'll get sad and you'll talk about it and then you just keep scrolling past it. And it could have been so easy to just keep scrolling, but instead we wanted to do something much bigger. So I've really just been praying and talking with Savannah and uh, the team on where this should go and what families you should incorporate. So I've been going through Instagram and you know the algorithm kind of recommends to you what you've been looking up. So if you're into fitness, usually the Instagram algorithm will like recommend you fitness posts on the Explore page. But because I've been looking up so much uh, pediatric cancer stuff, my, my Instagram Explore page is just filled with kids with cancer and different families with cancer. And it's just never ending. It's never ending. It's never ending. It's never ending. So I just don't, I don't know. I don't know who to reach out to. I don't know where to begin. Um, so I just, I, I'm just starting. I'm just reaching out to different families and different people and just praying that God will put the right people in the right families who want to tell their story, who are desperately trying to use their Instagrams and their platform that they already have to raise awareness and tell their story. We want to give them a bigger platform to further tell that story on. So it's, it's a lot. It's hard. What can we do that hasn't already been done? We decided to use our voice to echo the lives and stories of these sick children and their families. So right now we're uh, headed to LA to meet with a little girl and her mom named Callie. Um, she started another session of chemotherapy yesterday. Today is actually our second day of treatment, so we're going, and obviously with COVID and all the hospital regulations, um, a big part that we wanted to capture within this documentary was um, the hospitals, you know, just within the hospitals, because it's something that all parents hate, the kids hate, they, they love being home. You know, nobody wants to be away from their family, and especially with COVID times, whenever a lot of the times only one parent's allowed in. In LA, they just started allowing two people so this mom's going in and she has one spot, one extra spot, and she's allowing me to come in for the day. And um, that's where we're going. Children's Hospital LA. Hello. Okay, so we are um, two minutes out. Um, um, are you guys in the LA Children's Hospital parking lot or the Vons? Mask upside down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mask upside down. Hello. Hey, Charlie. How are you? 
My name's Cole. We got you a giant pony cycle. We heard that you wanted one of these, right? You are welcome. You're so sweet. He's a weirdo? Yeah. Well, that's awesome, we love weirdos. Nice to meet you. Hey, hey, nice to meet you, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much. No, thank you guys for letting me come along. And... Childhood cancer is the leading cause of death by disease in children under the age of 19 in the U.S. One in 285 children in the U.S. will be diagnosed with cancer by the time that they are 20 years old. Each year, an estimated 250,000 plus children will be diagnosed with cancer worldwide. That's almost 700 kids per day. Despite these facts, childhood cancer research receives less than 4% of the annual budget from the National Cancer Institute. So on a normal chemo treatment day, you'll be admitted to the room like this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's shared, but including our Your own room today? And you get in at nine usually, and you said yesterday you didn't leave till five? Yes. Wow, mm -hmm. nine to five, that's a long day for a little girl. Is this your bunny's port? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we gotta, we gotta find a top. Wow, yeah, we love pony rides. Yeah, but they're trying to eat the bushes. He's just trying to get a snack while you're on them. Huh? He's trying to eat the bushes <laughs> while you're on them? Yeah. It's crazy. Here, Callie is learning how to swallow a pill. Are you sure? She is learning because they are adult sized pills. Maybe if pediatric cancer research received more than 4% of the funding, medicine would be better suited for these little kids. She just seems too little for this. Tell me a little bit about how your faith has played a part in your guys' cancer journey, because I know we were talking about it earlier, and you, she was explaining to me how she came to know God through her daughter's diagnosis. When Jay Kelly got diagnosed, I knew that I needed him. Mm -hmm. He was the only way my child was gonna be cured. Lord, we just lift up Callie right now, God. I pray that you just, God, you just, pour out total and complete healing over her life, Lord. I pray for Callie's parents, God. I pray that you give them the strength, the peace, God. I pray that all depression, all anxiety leaves, God. I pray that you just, you do what you do best, God, and you make all things new. And God, I pray that you just um, give her just a totally new and healed body, God, that just has no evidence of disease for the rest of her life, God. So we receive it, we love you, and we thank you for all that you've done. Amen. Amen. One last thing before I head out is um, financially, it's not easy. So um, we wanted to give this to you and your family. Are you serious? And it's a uh, $10,000. So to help you guys and just, um, yeah, whatever you, we, we trust your heart. We know that it's not easy. So um, whatever you guys feel is best to do with that. And uh, we love you guys. Well, so nice meeting you. You're so cute, okay? And you're so well behaved and you're so strong. Yeah. Your dog is doing that? Yeah, wow. my, the brown one. <laughs> the brown one? All she was saying the entire time, I didn't even, I, I couldn't get it on camera enough that she just wants to go home. She just kept saying, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to see my dogs. I want to I want to ride a pony. I want to go to the park. Um, she's she's four years old. She doesn't want to be at a hospital. She wants to be home. And that's that's the saddest thing is, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm imagining my kid. I'm imagining my, any of my kids in that hospital saying, I, I want to go home. Mom, why can't I go home? They don't understand why they can't go home. And um, it's not right. It's not right, so. So Cole told me that he found a family in Miami whose little girl had cancer and he was gonna go visit them and pray over them. And at the same time, he was gonna go visit Penelope's family who lived in New Jersey. And I wanted to go so badly with him. And, um, but at the same time, I thought how important of an opportunity would this be for our daughter, Everly, who's eight, to go with him. Um, first of all, to just be humbled by just your overall health. Like 
I don't think that we realize how blessed we are just by being healthy um, and for Everly to learn that. And also just to get some daddy time with Cole and just to have this like learning experience, just to pray over families and pray over healing. And I just thought this was really important for Everly to go do with her dad. And so I sent them two together to go do this. I stayed back home with the babies um, and it just would have been a lot to take all of the, to take both of the babies with us. Bye-bye, Sissy. You'll have so much fun. Aww. Yes, she said you're going to have so much fun with Daddy. Uh, did she just say here? She said you'll get snacks. <laughs> Goodbye, Posey. I love, love you. you. Hey, be a good girl for Mommy, okay? Be a good girl for Mommy. Posey's not crying. Posey's not crying. Posey's not crying, no. Sissy's so sad because she's going to miss Mommy and Posey. She's going to miss you guys boy. so much. I want to walk. Yeah, we can draw. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to draw. Okay, love you. Love you. Bye, guys. Love you guys. Have Bye. a good trip. We will. Everybody's doing better now. Be happy. Yeah, you better. Still with your mom. Camila is a three year old girl. She's battling neuroblastoma. This is the exact same cancer that Callie also has. We're currently in the Los Angeles airport getting ready to catch a red eye flight to Miami where we will meet with Camila and her family in the morning. So, even though she lives in Miami, um, I feel like that, that's God's heart. Like, you, you don't always just go for the easy person right down the street. If God's calling you to go and pray over and share someone's story who's on the other side of the country, um, we didn't want to withhold from that. So we we're like, let's go to Miami, you know? 10.30, flight leaves at 11.10, so we'll probably start boarding in like 10 minutes. Straight to Miami. It's nighttime, we're gonna wake up in Miami and uh, go meet Camila for the first time. You ready? And it's Camila's birthday in one week. One week from today, so she's turning four. So it makes it extra special. A little extra leg room. If you can't tell. You did. This yeah. is like, I think we got like an extra two inches. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That can actually unhinge my knees. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not even in Miami yet and I'm already sweating. It's gonna get hot there. You ready, Ev? Yeah? Should we get our neck pillows ready? <laughs> you guys got Cocoa Krispies. <laughs> Just tell me whenever you want the Krispies. And, uh, I'll take it all. <laughs> Alright, we got on our flight to Miami. Um, we're about to take a red eye. It is almost 11 o'clock and we have a red eye flying uh, overnight and I think we get in at 7.30. With a time change we have like a five and a half hour flight so fingers crossed we can sleep for like three or four hours at least. But we'll be tired in the morning but we are so stoked and excited to meet Camila. Prior to this past February, I had no idea what the word neuroblastoma even was. I mean, if you told me any cancer other than like brain cancer or leukemia, I probably wouldn't be too familiar with it. And now, just a few months later, I feel like so educated and specifically neuroblastoma, pediatric cancer. And I feel like that's because the passion is there and I'm not trying to guilt trip anybody because we are in the exact same boat. But I mean, there's little kids all around the world, right down the street from you, like me dying of diseases just like this every single day that I just feel like there has to be something that can, that can be done, you know, and, I, and whenever I think about this documentary and what we're trying to make, I don't really even know what exactly I'm trying to do. I just thought we have to do something. Like on a big scale, like please I hope that somebody can see this and increase that budget so then medicines get better. Back in the mid-1950s, childhood leukemia had less than a 10% survival rate and now because medicine has increased, it has over a 90% survival rate. So. I mean, those statistics are amazing, but there's still so many childhood cancers that still have such a small survival rate. And, but neuroblastoma is so common in kids five and under, it's one of the more common diseases. And um, we're hoping for better medicines and hopefully one day a cure. Please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the seatbelt sign is turned off. And keep the aisles clear of all carry-on items. Take a moment to check your seat back pocket for any personal items. Maybe a little more up This used to be one of everybody's biggest fears. Yeah, well, it still kind of is. 
maybe as of like a week ago she got over that, but. Oh, that's just escalators in general? Just escalators, yeah. Mom sent me this video yesterday of Camila just saying hey. She's excited. Hi, Claude. I see you Sunday. <laughs> She's so cute. Hi, Camila. We're so excited to see you today. Can you write a message to her? You can try. See if it's, um, it's pretty easy. You just go through. Her uh, Kidman, he's a uh, St. Jude, um, St. Jude thing where you can create a message for a St. Jude kid. And, to him. and I, I want them to tell their story. So I, I don't want to like game plan it too much and I want it to be like all God. I want I want God to move, I want, I want the Spirit to move. And so, but I also don't want to go in with no plan. But it's also such a sensitive um, subject and topic, you know. But what I've learned after having conversations with these families, at least over texts and um, DMs, whatever it is, is that most are so eager. This is pretty common, you know. I mean, for them, especially in their world, I like like they're connected to so many other cancer kids and families. I know Camille is connected to so many other kids just right here in Miami. Um, we could have made this whole video right here in Miami, and we we could have made a, a ten part series with how many kids there are just here in Miami. You know? My mind goes blank on issues that are more serious than this. A sick kid. Why? I can't even begin to fathom the weight that these parents must feel every second of every day. And that is why it is so essential to us that as people of faith, we prayed over and lay hands on these kids and these families believing in faith and asking the ultimate healer that at the end of the day to do what only he can do. We're thankful for doctors and we're thankful for medicine and medical advancements through the years, but we aren't flying across the country just to bring these kids good vibes. We come knowing that the same God who brought Sarah's womb back to life to have Isaac, who opened blind eyes, who called the lame to walk, who healed the leper, who made the sun stand still, who created everything we see and fills our lungs with every breath who rose Jesus from the dead, defeating sin can surely change the course of a disease today. We aren't just praying to momentarily make these families feel better, like putting a band-aid on an open wound, but we pray pleading to God that something miraculous and something divine would happen. I don't know why bad things happen and why kids get sick. But this message of faith and hope in street. Jesus is why we came. We were close. Yeah, we're in your back end. Hi, Camila. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. How are you? I like your bow. Is it Thank cool you. if we come over for a little bit? She's like, I want to play with the little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Everly. Say hi. She's a lot of fun. She's good with kids. Her tumor was right next to her kidney. So when they touched, they felt something. Hmm. So they request an ultrasound and they found a mass. That's what they call it, a mass. And they didn't know if it was cancer, it was just a mass that was there. In two days that she was in there, she just started chemo. Wow. They told us it was a stage four. The cancer already was in stage four. So that means it went from the side of her kidney to her bone marrow. Mm. So it spread. My started with just a little bump that you see. And you might think, oh, she hurt herself. But that's that neuroblastoma. Wow. And um, it was just so fast. We went from, uh, oh, she has a fever, get Tylenol. We got this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To, oh my God, what's going on with her? She's on life support and this and that. And what are we supposed to do? Wow. Nothing. 
You just yeah. sit back, pray, and watch. And That's the worst part. Yeah, and just pray yeah, that they're doing great. their best. It takes over everything real quick. Wow. In the beginning, she used to ask us, why? Why, why are you doing this to me? And that, mm -hmm. those words is like your three-year-old daughter asking you, and you can't explain to her why we have to do this. But later on, we started explaining to her, and she knows why she goes to the hospital. She knows why she got to put the needles in her arm. She knows why she got to do all that. I'm sure she doesn't understand what cancer is, yeah. but she knows she had it. She tells you, I have cancer. Yeah. So, the name of my hospital is da 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we just look at her and it's like, why hair? Yeah. You know, it's just, this happens to other people, you think, not to us. But she was so healthy. She was just, we don't know what happened. I kept asking the doctor, what did I do wrong? You know, like, and he told me there was nothing you could do to, well, right. to yeah. avoid this. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. It was just, it's like the lottery, you know? Uh -huh. It's just, mm -hmm. she was picked and that's it. Isn't childhood cancer only a 4% of cancer research budget? Yep. Yeah. Only 4%. And there are, there are futures. Yeah. yeah. 4% is just... We're hoping that somehow somebody will see it, who can do something and is like, this is wrong. Four four percent's wrong. I pray that you get some peace over her. It's nothing. I pray that you get peace over her mom, over her dad, over her whole family, God. I pray that you just heal her, God. God, would you heal her? God, would you? I loved seeing Camila, and I it was really fun talking to her. She kept on talking to me and saying, um, "Do you want to play with me?" And it was really fun. She it was really really cute. All right. Hey. Bye. It was uh, very nice meeting you. Likewise. Of thank course, you so much man. for letting us into your home. Um, oh, thank really you. appreciate it. Thank um, you. Bye, Camila. Say bye. Thank bye. you for coming. Bye. Aww. Bye, Camila. Can I have a hug? <laughs> See ya. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for coming, guys. Yeah, I thank you guys so much. I wanted to give you guys this as well before we headed out. This is a check for $10,000 because I know that it's not easy with the financial burden of having a sick kid. So, this for you guys. Thank you so and, much. Um, just write your name on it because I didn't know who to make it out to. You will make it to one <laughs> Yeah, but thank you, guys you so have, much. You guys have a great day. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate and it. These are little bracelets. We will be these wearing these on our flight. Big bracelets. Awesome. One for you. Thank and one you. One for the cameraman. Yeah, thanks. And there's another one just for your wife. Man, do these bracelets have your name on it, Camila? Pray for Camila, right? You have your, you have your own bracelets? <laughs> all of us are. Everybody is. Yes. We all are. It. About a week ago, as I'm going through this and trying to find answers and praying and, and dealing with my anxiety and trying to, you know, get answers for Posey, this. Uh, Instagram account comes onto my home feed and I click on it and um, feel like it, it's a sign to some extent and the Instagram account is called Positively Penelope. Penelope is a two-year-old girl, supposedly's age, who um, did get diagnosed with cancer. She has stage four high-risk neuroblastoma. So I asked this mom, like, is it okay if we share your daughter's story? Not, not anything for our gain mm. whatsoever and I hope that you guys know that and see that simply for they're trying to help raise awareness, um, help, help receive prayers, I mean words. A large reason that we even made the video about my battle with anxiety was just out of fear of Posey potentially being diagnosed with cancer. That fear just rattled us, but mainly me. Um, another large reason was there, in the research process of looking into um, all the stuff for Posey, we came across a little girl named Penelope, who was two years old like Posey, but did get diagnosed with cancer. In the summer of 2020, Penelope got diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. And so back in February, months before we even knew who Camila and Callie was, months before their stories even changed our lives, Penelope's story changed our life. And Penelope's story inspired this entire documentary. I truly don't think that we'd be making this documentary without Penelope's story. Yeah. And um, so back in February, we just knew that we had to help her. We didn't know how, but we just knew that we had to help her. And one of the ways we felt called to help her was to fly out and pray over her. Um, so we, that, that's what we planned on doing. We actually booked flights and um, we were planning to fly out and, and pray for healing and a divine miracle to happen over her. Ooh. 
So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this. Um, as a lot of you guys know, we followed uh, this girl named Penelope. And we tried to raise some money and awareness. And uh, I was actually supposed to um, fly out and meet her and pray over her and just believe for a miracle uh, but she passed she ended up passing a few days before I was even able to fly out and uh, that wrecked me that wrecked me really bad I haven't been the same since I've been coming across these kids and after Penelope it was just kid after kid after kid after kid after kid after kid after kid ever since I went down the rabbit hole per se of just finding these kids with cancer I just find myself watching their stories and just breaking down all the time. Like, I just, like I said, I just see my kid and uh, for the longest time I could just look away. I could watch a kid dying of cancer and I could watch it, see them with bald hair, know they're dying and then look away and be able to go and enjoy my day. And now I just can't do that. I can't look away anymore. So, um, I've been thinking, I've been praying, I've been talking with people on it, just what we can do, how we can help. Because I know that we can't help everybody, but if we can help some people, then that's uh, what we're gonna try and do. So I have no idea where this is gonna go, but I've been in contact with uh, uh, Camilla's family. So uh, that's, she lives in Miami. Penelope lived in New Jersey, and we're gonna, we're gonna do something, so. I don't know what, but we're going we're going to do something. dinner right now to bring over to uh, Penelope's parents place. We asked what their favorite dinner was. They said Olive Garden, so we're picking up Olive Garden. Gonna go meet with them, have dinner. So even with Penelope being gone, um, I wanted to, it, it just felt right to include her parents in this. And even though she's been in heaven for a few months, um, her parents haven't touched any of the stuff at her house. All of her toys, all of her, all the stuff they said, is it's exactly where Penelope left it. So we're, we're going to see that right now. Going to have dinner with them have a conversation and then uh, we'll stay the night and then tomorrow morning we're actually gonna drive two and a half hours to um, where they buried Penelope. When going into conversations like this it's really impossible to anticipate what to expect. Um, I'm not a professional. I don't have these conversations regularly with people and I just wanted them to be able to tell their story but asking certain questions like this can be so difficult and we just have no idea what they're going to say or how we're going to respond so um, it just makes it all that much that much more difficult not in like a bad way I'm not bashing them at all because honestly she had a, a two-year appointment for like her pediatrician like a yearly checkup like four days before we actually got diagnosed and you know, they'd have to press on their stomach and stuff, and he felt nothing weird. He's like, she looks good. She had a bruised eye though for like a month, but he's like, no, toddlers are toddlers. Yeah. That's it. And I was like, you're right. Like, I, like, he doesn't know. He's not an oncologist. He wouldn't know. Um, so when it was cancer, and we were like, we called them on the phone, like, hey, her eye just looks more swollen. Um, the doctor's office is about to close, so they're like, you can bring her to the ER if you want to, but you know, COVID's like really heavy right now. So you shouldn't, like, yeah. you should wait on it, mm -hmm. and... They kind of gave us the option. They were like, you know, if you want to go in, you can. We were not going to tell you not to do it, but no. that's your call. Were the protrusions all due to tumors and the cancer, or yeah. any of the medication, or... Mm -hmm. No, it was all, it was all, tumor. all tumors and the cancer tumor. itself? Mm -hmm. well, leading up to Penelope's death, were you guys 
expecting it, and as it happened, um, just I, I'm not gonna say like what did it feel like because I I can only imagine the worst imaginable pain in the world. But how would you explain the moments leading up to and the moments shortly after? Well, leading up to it, I guess we didn't really expect it that moment. Like we knew it was coming eventually, but we just never knew when that. Like would be. for the days before, we knew it was gonna happen soon because she had signs of her actively going, and she had all the signs of. Even the hospice nurse was like, you know, she's in that stage. The night before, she actually like was awake. Like she's been sleeping for the last like week of her life, just sleeping. Like she wouldn't wake up. Um, she was just tired because the morphine and all other things. And um, the last night she was actually awake and talking to us and like just like telling me to like to sing to her and uh, just like really good. I was like, wow, like she's actually like really nice. Like she's doing really well today. And then the next day was when it like it happened. And then the moment it happened was just even crazier because I was ordering pizza and she's sleeping on Jack and. I'm ordering the food and she just made this like weird noise and like that's how we knew like the noise what she made was just like like just like like I, mean, I can't even explain the noise she made yeah. but like Jack just said I feel like it was like a release of breath I think right yeah but it, it's almost like a gasp like kind of uh, yeah, like she, she was trying to catch her breath or but I think she was letting it out it was like a like, a, like I don't know like, a, like a, no, a wind noise and then and then she like took another one. And, but all I remember is just Jack saying, like, Cassandra, and mm -hmm. I looked at him, and we looked at Penny, and... And she took, like, two deck, like, random breaths, like, I guess, the release, the relief breath, like, she was just like... And I was like... Mm. Yeah, like, it was almost like hope for a second, like, wait, is she breathing again? But then it was... it was it. it was just... Yeah. I know she could hear us, but, like, we just told her, like... Don't have to hold on for us anymore. Like we're okay. We're gonna be fine. And that she's gonna be with all her um, family up there, with her like, cousins and uh, all the like, Duncan nice coffee up there. Like today, I actually cried because I seen her. Uh, I was going through her box of stuff and I found this. Um, this was during because she loved being in the hospital. They actually made her a badge, like a nurse. Yeah. And this was like her own little nurse badge, wow. and I found it in a random box, and I, I, I like just started crying. Like it really hurt. Camila had this exact same uh, oh, yeah. high school set, <laughs> so and so does my two-year-old. Oh yeah, it's that's the favorite. That's like they, the they all love it. I'm telling you, Posey could be outside playing with that, yeah. and you guys actually have all the all the flavors. <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling Camila. I'm missing a few. It's there. Hang around. Yeah, Patty's kind of always missing. If, if it's okay with you guys, because we won't be back in your home, mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know what level of faith you guys have, I'd love to just pray over your home, if that's okay. Dear God, we know that you are in heaven right now with Penny looking down on us, Lord, in this moment, in this house. And Lord, we just, we love you and we thank you. Even whenever we don't understand why things happen, Lord, we know that you work all things for the good of those who love you, Lord. And I pray that you just give um, Penny's parents right here just um, the clarity and the peace to go through life, um, that you fill them with your love. And that, um, God, we're so expectant and so excited to, to meet you one day and, uh, um, and to see Penny again, God. We love you and we thank you for everything you've done. Amen. Amen. The next morning, we drove two hours from Penelope's family's house in Newark, New Jersey to Penelope's gravesite. Yeah, we can tunnel two miles ahead.
It was really sad. I'd never been in a cemetery before and seeing all the gravesides are, it was really sad and emotional. I know you guys ch specifically chose this spot for a reason, and I'm curious as to what that reason is. We wanted something less industrialized, something natural that she could just, you know, go back to the earth, you know, the way we would intend it, just to na just naturally go back and re nourish the, the world around her and give life to flowers and plants and trees. So. We always bring Penelope, like usually the tail end of my Dunkin', because um, she would always share Dunk Dunkin' Donuts uh, coffee with me. Yeah. Um, so that she was, was it was her favorite thing to drink, literally over anything. It didn't matter what it was. She knew the I love you. That's not mama. Not the mama. Not the mama. I love you. I love you.